All right, so um, again, when I have the X bag, I can just plug it in. Wait, hold on. These are the notes we picked up yesterday. Yes. Or practice or whatever it is. Yes. So negative 2 over 2, that gives me negative 1, right? Mm -hmm. If I plug in negative 1 over negative 2, no, because I have it negative in the bottom wave for me. Okay? Then let me do the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those points. So I have negative 1, I go to negative 1. At negative 2, I go to negative 2. Alright, let's go to 1. What? I plotted my point. Uh, what's that? What's what did I do? The I one at the bottom? What is that? Negative 4? I did. I went to negative 2, negative 1, <coughs> negative. Oh, okay. Huh? What's the, the one under the first table? A negative 2? No, the other one. A negative one? Okay. All right, so then I can plug in one. I get the absolute value of one over one equals one. The absolute value of two <laughs> over two equals one. So one and one and two and one. So what do you think based on what's happening? What well, could keep happening? What if I plug in three? What if I plug in four? What if I plug in five? What if I plug in a hundred? One. All right. What about on the other end? What if I plug in negative three? Uh, negative what if I plug in negative four? Negative what if I plug in a negative hundred? Okay, it's still going to be negative one. So when I read this from left to right, what is the rule for this one? Any, the y equals what? Negative. Negative what? One. What's the rule for this side? Y one. equals. One. Okay, so once I have those rules, that means there are restrictions. So when do I equal negative one? At the one. At x what? One. Negative one. Huh? Negative one. Not just equal to negative one, but greater than. Great, not greater than. We're going the wrong direction. Okay. Yeah. Less than. It would have to be less than or equal to. Remember the bigger negative number? Negative number that means the smaller it is. So what would be the rule for the restriction for this rule? X is when x is greater than or equal to 1. So that would be me taking this function, identifying the rule, and setting up restrictions. What this leads into is what we call piecewise functions, which is what today's notes are over. Mm. What are they called? Piecewise. Oh, you said like P squared. <laughs> oh. Alright, so let's try it again. So I'm going to plug in negative 2. So I plug in negative 2. So negative 2 plus 1 minus the absolute value of negative 2. So negative 2 plus 1 is? Negative 1. Negative 1. And the absolute value of negative 2 is? Two. So I have <laughs> 1 minus 2 equals? Negative 2. Oh, sorry. That's right. It's negative 1 minus 2 equals negative 3. So then I'm going to do the next one. So I plug in negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is? Absolute value of negative 1 is? So 0 minus 1 equals? I'm going to plug in 0 again. 0 plus 1 is? The absolute value of 0 is? So 1 minus 0 is? I'm plug in 1. 1 plus 1 is? Two. Uh, minus the absolute value of 1, which is? One. 2 minus 1 is? One. So I'm going to plot my points. So I have 0, 1. I have 1, 1. I have negative 1, negative 1. I have negative 2, negative 3. So if this function continues, what if, what do you think will happen if I plug in two? It would be a so let's a one, so let's test it out. So two plus one is three. Three minus two is alright. What do you think will happen over here if I plugged in negative three? Would it keep going down? If I plug in negative three, so negative three plus one is? 
negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. So am I not keep continually decreasing? All right. So now I have two functions. What do I know about these functions? One is they're both what? Starts with an L. Linear. Linear. So that means they both abide by the rule y equals mx plus b. This function, do I know what its m and b are? Can I find them though? Why not? Okay. Oh, okay. M is always rise over right. run. So I rise two and I run one. So what's my slope? Two. And what's my y intercept? One. So my rule is? Okay. What about the rule for this one? My slope is obviously? One. My slope is? Oh. Zero. zero. And my y intercept is? One. So my, flunk, my rule is? So when does this side happen? When x is what? Less. less. It's when it's less than or equal to zero. And when does y equals one happen? When x is greater than. Ashley, when I'm greater than, that means I'm going to the left, I meant to the right. Just look at how the arrow is pointing. This tells me that I need to go to the right. Yeah. So if I'm going to the right of the, of the point, that means I'm greater than the point. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to the left of the point, that means I'm less than the point. And you can kind of look at these arrows, like see what they're doing? This kind of lets me know that this means I'm to the left of it. This kind of lets me know that I'm to the right of it. See it? You don't see the arrows? Okay, left of it. So this is telling me I am less than whatever that value is. If I am to the right of it, this is telling me what this value is, like to the right of it. So right now I'm to the left of, of zero, so I'm less than zero. If I'm to the right of zero, then I am greater than zero. Anyone else confused? I don't understand what you did. What is that about an X? Right now, right there, to the right. That. Yeah, I'm saying if I'm going to the right, that means I'm greater than, right? Is that just supposed to be an arrow that you messed up? She was just doing no, that. I, I was showing you. I couldn't draw the arrow over there. She was trying to show it absolutely. Okay, you're going to do three for homework. Um, okay. Alright. Is there a Yep, you're going to do four for homework. Three, three. And we're going to do five as a class, and then you're going to do six as a homework. All right, so same thing here. I'm going to plug in and figure out where my points are. So I plug in negative 5. Negative 5 plus 3 is? Yes, Miles? Oh, no. You can keep going. Oh. Negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 is? 2. Okay. Negative 5 minus 3 is? Negative 8. The absolute value of negative 8 is? So what's 2 minus 8? All right, that one's done. On to the next one. Negative 3. Plug in negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is? Zero. zero. Minus negative 3 minus 3 is? Negative, three. negative six. 6. Wait, when I come out, I am a? Five. So what do I get? 6. Negative 6. Negative 6. Plug in 0. Did I do that already? No. Okay. 0 plus 3 is? 3. 0 minus 3 is? When I come out though, I'm still gonna be, I'm gonna become a? Five. So what's three minus three? Zero. Okay. Can you get points deducted for writing No, it's okay. All right, three plus three is? Six. Three minus three is? Zero. Zero. Five plus three is? Eight. Five minus three is? Six. 
Which gives me. So when I do this, I'm going to plot my points. One, two, three, four, five. So negative five, negative six. I was wondering what you were doing. I was like, I don't know. You're writing over the wrong one? Yeah. I did that for the first one. This print is really, the graphs printed really badly. They did. Mine's really hard to see, too. You did a horrible job. <laughs> Free print. All I did was print. Very bad. Printer. The printer did a horrible job. Thank you. What does right. the last one say? You saw what it was before you gave it to us. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best I had. On, on five. You could have been drawing it on your own paper. What, what does the whole thing say? Because I can't see it. Eight minus two equals six. All right, so reading from left to right, what is this y equal? What is y equal? Y equal negative six. Hey, you left your binder. Um, what is this y equal? What do I have to find? I need to find my slope and then find my y-intercept. So what's my slope? Two. So it's rise over run. So I went up. I'm just going to go all the way up six and go over three. Six divided by three is? Two. And then my intercept is at? Zero. So do I need to write it? Nope. So y equals? Two x. Okay. And then what's the y here? Six. So we have our y's. And now we have to find our rules. So when do I equal six, negative six? Uh, negative. At what, what x value? Negative. When x is what? Negative. We look at the x values, what x value is right here? It's less than, um, is less than or equal to negative three? There we go. So when x is less than or equal to negative three, that's when that happens. When does this happen? When x is what? Not great. We're talking about when x, when x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and uh, less than, than negative or, equal greater to than, uh, equal to than or equal to. So I write it as negative. So when x is greater than negative 3, right? But less than or equal to 3. We already used the equal. Each interval, they have to correlate. So if I'm equal here, I can't be equal here. So what that means? So what about my last one? When X is? I have a question. How did you get that? These are my X values. This is negative three. This is negative three. 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 So then when I get here, I am, what are these values? They're all to the right, so they are, they're positive, what are they? What's my relationship? They're greater than. So when x is greater than three. When do you use a little um, square root of Equal to? Chocolate bar. Oh, chocolate bar? You use chocolate bar when there's a value. Notice how each one of these is a solid point. So, so I'm going to use the entire time. Okay. Well, I'm talking about that one. This one? The last one? No, the, the first two. Okay, I use it here because from left to right, is there a value at negative three? Am I full? Yeah. So therefore, it's equal. So I already got fed here, so I don't have to worry about that happening in here. So this one's good. So now I got to worry about here. So I travel along, travel along. Is that one full? Yeah. Yep, so then I need to make sure I put <laughs> Okay, I just wanted to know why it was me. Why it was all this and like that. Yep. All right, so what what are our homework problems? Uh, three, four, six. Three, four, six. Yes. 
Which one? The last one. X is greater than three. It is. It's X is greater than three. But why isn't it greater than or equal to? Because we already accounted for it's equal to right here. Oh. Y'all like how I move the phone? No. No, because what happens when you have to move the laptop? <laughs> How's this phone floor? Thank you. Yes, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, the I think it's a better location. Thank you. All right. Okay, we're going to move on to our notes. We are caught up a little bit. <laughs> now we're going to go to actual piecewise functions. No, well, more traditional piecewise functions that do not involve absolute value. Um, not all piecewise functions start off with absolute value functions. This is a true piecewise function. Okay? What a piecewise function is a function composed of different functions, but it's just pieces of those functions. It's not the full function themselves, just pieces of those functions. Got it? Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, like. So when I look here on this function, I have a piece of a, what's x squared? Parabola. parabola. So I have a piece of a parabola. What is this three? <coughs> linear. It's a linear, what, what, kind, what shape is that? Well, what a line. direction is that? A line, what kind of line? Positive. Po positive. It doesn't have a slope, so. If I'm a slope of zero. A horizontal. A horizontal, so three is a horizontal line. So I have a piece of a parabola, a piece of a horizontal line, and then what's my last thing? What's six minus x? Mm -hmm. No, you're fine. Okay. Huh? What? What's six minus x? Six minus x. Yeah. What? What? What function is that? Regular linear. What regular linear? Well, I don't know what that means, but it's a decreasing linear. Okay. Why is it decreasing? Because it's a negative x. My slope is negative. Okay? So I have pieces of other functions. Again, we said that this is a quadratic. We said that this is a horizontal line. And we said that this is a decreasing line, right? So all together, these pieces make up my new function. What? Okay. Horizontal. It says hori, but horizontal. I should have just added a z. It didn't work out. Alright, so the first thing is I need to identify my breaking points. My breaking points are determined by my intervals. Well, I only have one. What's my breaking point? One. one. So that acts as kind of like my imaginary line. That helps. I did it on purpose because it's supposed to be invisible. So what does that say on top? Quadratic quad? Quad on the bottom? Decreasing? Why don't you just get your desk up? Should I do dotted line? I feel weird. Yeah. I, I would do a dotted line. All right, so we're going to start off with the x squared. So x squared only from left to right it only is going to stop where? At the 1. At the 1. So if I plug 1 to x squared, what do I get? 1. 1. Am I included or not included here? Not not include. So what do I use? Open circle. An open circle. Whoever said that while well, yawning. So I'm going to have an open circle there because I'm not included. Remember? Where? At one yeah. one. At one. At one one, I have a open circle. Remember? If you had me last year, I talked about the chocolate bars. Okay. So last year we talked about chocolate bars. If I am hungry. If my stomach is empty, I am hungry because I haven't eaten anything, right? If my stomach is full, that's because I had a yummy, yummy chocolate bar. Right. Okay? You are so crazy. <laughs> Why? Where did you get one one? I got one one. For, what is x squared? What is one squared? One one. So therefore, at 1, 1, it's a open circle. I'm hungry because I have no chocolate bar. Okay? Now, x, I forgot about equal. Equal is super full because it had how many chocolate bars? Too many. Two of them. Okay? So it, that means, why am I dumb? 
Okay. So we know here I'm going to have a closed circle, right? So this should be an open circle, closed circle, open circle. Open? I don't know. It just happened. All right. So now let me finish making this parabola. So what is zero squared? Zero. What is negative one squared? What is negative two squared? Actually, all I'm doing is plotting x squared. I'm just plotting x squared. The dotted one was the middle. I mean, the first one. Right. Yes, it's only this one because this is my boundary line. This is where Which I define it. For the middle one? Yeah, I'm only I've only done x squared. But how are you? How are you doing I'm plugging in x values to figure out where I go. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just so plugging in x values. Three. Negative three squared is. No. Can I go any more? No. No. So I'm just gonna connect. Don't stop. Quadratic is done. Right. Wait, why doesn't it go that way? Because, because I have this line that stops me. It says that my function is only less than one. That means it goes to the left of that value. <laughs> Can you just try and have an open mind for me? And like be willing to accept, try it. Just give me a little bit more. Okay? Okay, hold on. Wait. <laughs> okay, okay. Give me a minute. Okay, where did the dotted line come from again? Okay, the dotted line is my interval. It's what's defining where I start and where I stop. Okay, so this dotted line is at one. Okay, so whenever I do this, it's always going to be the same number, right? It can be, yeah, it's going to be, but this one has two, so when we get there, you'll see one with more than one. Okay, so you can have more than one dotted line. I think you guys are always trying to look for a rule, like a cheating, a cheating line out of doing something. Possibly. I don't think, I think, it, don't try to, like, everything's connected, but wait until you see why they're so, connected. So, like, I think on the next one, if there's two. specific reason why they came up with that. Right, right, right. So, on the next one, if there's two, there's going to be two dotted lines, right? Yes. Okay, and can anything be in between those? Or yes. Okay. That's why so you what have. Does it, what does it mean if it's in between? That's when you have the oh, X okay. in the middle. Okay. I haven't seen it. All right, so back to what I was going with this. All right, so now we're on to the middle line. So at the middle line, it's just a horizontal line, right? But it only has a value where? At one. So at x equals one, what is it? So I go to x equals one and I plot three. And I'm full, so I just plot a. Well, I wish I was full. I'm so full. Which one is one? This is the second one. Yes. So we've done horizontal. Now we just did. No, we done. We we completed quadratic, and we just did horizontal. So that's what it just. That's it. There's no other rule for it. It says that x equals one. I am three. So the next one. So now the next one is six minus. X. So where does 6 minus X, if I plug in 1 there, where do I lie? 5. 5. So here, am I open or closed at 5? Open. All right, so now I can figure out the rest. So if I plug in, I go to, at 1, I am 5. This is my X. Mm -mm. I pl six is right here. I didn't plug in six. I go to where I plugged in. So if I plug in two, I'm going to go to two. Plug in three, I'm going to go to three. Okay? Just so that we can... Someone hid your phone in the dry eraser basket. In the dry eraser basket. <laughs> All right, so this tells me I can just go ahead and plug in x equals 6 because that's going to take me where? Zero. Zero. So I know I'm going to end up down here and I can just connect those dots. Instead of doing every line in between, 
And that's my full function. Oh, you're supposed to be open. Okay, so what's that little code? I see you already. So it's the X is one, right? <laughs> like what do you say? The X is one, right? Six oh, minus X is one, right? No, this is saying at X. At X for six minus one, I'm an open circle. There's no value there. That's why. But six minus one is five within open circle. Then it goes down like a regular function because I could just do my slope, right? I could go down and to the right, down and to the right, down and to the right, down and to the right. Down and to the right. Down and to the right. It's just a linear function. Is the um, x equals 1 always going to be in the middle of knowledge? It depends on where it falls in the piecewise function. Can you let a y intercept at 6? Yes, but I don't get there because I have a. Yes, I have an x-intercept at 6, but I also have a y-intercept at 6, but I don't get there because I have that, that breaking point, that boundary line. So, that 6? Was that 6 from over there? This 6? Yeah. No, this 6 was just an x value that I plugged in to see where, where my function was heading. So I plugged in x equals 6 into this, and I got 6 minus 6 is 0. So at 6, I go to... Zero. Okay. I got five from plugging in one, and six minus one is five, and that's why at one I have an open circle at five. Is a lot of lining rows in the top. The the starting there. No. Oh, from the dotted line. Yes. It's either my starting or my ending point for my function. Only confused on one thing. Okay. Why there is no line for the second one? For the yeah. second one, yeah. because it's a horizontal line and it doesn't go anywhere but to x. It doesn't expand between anything. It just says at x, this is my value. And what this allows for me to do is, this is a continuous function because for every value, there is a y. So for every x value, there is a y value. So therefore, I'm a continuous function and I continue from negative infinity to positive infinity. <laughs> Also, the x is just there to continue it. I mean, that you one, dirty. That one you is dark. Dirty. It's not just there to continue it, but it's just what this function is made of. Um, everything in the real world is based on piecewise function because nothing is so, we're not consistent. So, there, at one moment, we may be doing one thing, then at another moment, we may be doing this function, and at another moment, we may be doing this function. So, because of their lack of consistency, that is why piecewise functions are used to model real world situations. So this is all connected. Yes, it's all connected. It is connected. I just did it all in different colors. So, so No, it's all connected. Remember, this is an invisible line. Okay. Question. How do you how did you find your domain? How did I find my domain? I look and going all the way to the left, my X is going forever. And going all the way to the right, my X is still going on forever. So my domain is from negative infinity to. So my range would be the same. So my range is as I look at the bottom, my Y's are going on forever. As I look at the top, my Y's are going on forever. So my range is. The jokes, I know you just heard what Paula told me. It was so inappropriate. I'm sorry. I just, I would like y'all to know that. If you're still under, not understanding, I just explained a whole lot, yeah, I and I hope you were listening, and if you ask me a question that pertains to what I just explained, I'm going to suggest you just go watch the video for the time where you weren't listening. Thank you for the disrespect. Wait, are you recording right now? Yep. So are you going to cut that out? Nope. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> you turn up the volume. Stevie. Okay. So now I'm going to go into the next problem. So at the next one, I have... I don't think we're going to be able to get to the back. I feel like you're going to ask a lot of questions. So um, I'm going to look at my intervals. So my intervals are negative 2 and 2, positive 2. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my invisible boundary lines, my little breaking point. Well, wait, so why is it called a breaking point? It breaks my function into parts. Come on, Do we have to do this all the time? Yes. This if you don't need them, you don't need them. But I am doing it for notes purpose. Okay. okay. No. I 
I was interested before. Okay, so then once I have that, now I can start focusing on the function. Looking at my first function, I know I have a negative linear function, right? right. Which means it's decreasing. Right? Here, I know I have a reflected over the y-axis radical, which is square root function. So my function looks something like this, because it was reflected over the y-axis. Hmm? Okay, what is this? I don't see how you negative see linear. So what should I write? Because negative. I was gonna, I'm about to. Okay. okay. So it's a square root function that's been reflected. Why do I know that? Because I know my square root functions because we just learned them. Um, parent function of square root. It starts here, does something like that. When I have a negative on the inside, it's gonna cause me to do something like that. All right, I have a positive square root function. So my function is going to look like that. Okay, so there's a lot that can be told from just looking at the function itself. And then I start. So I'm starting at negative two x minus one. And this happens when x is less than or equal to negative two. Negative two. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna plug in negative two. So I plug in negative two, I get negative two times negative two is? Four. Positive. And four minus one is? Three. So in negative two, I have a closed circle at? Three. Why is it closed? Because it's full. Because it's full, I have that equal. And then now I can find out other values. So I can plug in negative three, or I can use my slope. So I know my slope is negative two over one. So that means I can go up two and left one, right? So I can go up two, one, two, left one. Up two, left one, up two, left one, up two, left one. And this shows me the path that my function is taking. I believe this one was a little bit easy. It wasn't at all. Sorry. It wasn't easy? Same stuff. I just want to get it easy. Maybe because you got quiet. No. All right, square root. So that one's done. So now I'm going to the square root function. So the first thing I'm going to plug in is negative 2. So I'm going to plug in negative 2. 2 minus negative 2 is? 0. 2 minus four. negative 2 is? I mean, 4. Negative. Square root of 4 is? 2. two. two. So with negative 2, I go to? Two. Am I open or closed there? Open. open, because right here, does this one have a bar underneath? No. No. Okay. So I'm open. And then I'm going to test my, my end value. Where do I end at? So I plug that in. So I have 2 minus 2 is? Zero. And the square root of 0 is? Zero. So on my other breaking point, I am 0. And it's a closed circle because it's? Close. So I can just connect those. Is that my shape? No. It's my reflected? Yep. Okay. Why is it curved? Because it's a square root function. It's not a linear function. It's curved. Because I plugged in 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. And so at x equals 2, the value is 0. And then these are part of the same function, so they are connected. Yay, yeah, name, maybe so. I'll take baby selfie now. All right, so then we have two. So I'm going to plug the two in. And what? I plugged into the wrong spot. I'm going to plug this two in, and I get zero. zero. Currently, I'm already full there, right? Yes. So guess what? That still counts as me being full. Wow. I'm still full there. Even if you don't have a chocolate Even if I don't, because I already ate one. Wait, what? I already ate one. I am still full here because what happened here? I already ate one. So we have to the same line as the first one. Huh? Yes. So if I'm already full once, I'm going to stay full because I'm trying to be conscious of my weight. Well, what if you're. What if you're hungry? So if one was. Hold on. Ashley was trying to answer. Ashley. Okay. Just explain that again to the kids. 
just All right, guys, like not using chocolate bar analogy. If I'm here, if I'm already been, if I already have a value here, if I already exist here, because I don't exist, I exist with this function, I don't exist with this function, doesn't make me invisible. I've already been acknowledged. I came first. I'm here. I exist. So, so there's already a value for x equals so 2. Just put another one on top. So it would just be another full bar. It still will remain full because that value still exists there. Okay. <laughs> okay. And now I have to figure out what happens next. So as I go further next, um, the easy thing is to try to put a number underneath the square that will make this a perfect square. So a good number to use would be Three. Six. 6 because that gives me 4. four. Square root of 4 is? Two. So that means at 6, I am at 2. And I can just connect those is it? dots. No, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't matter what number you put in. It just makes it easier to know which number. Because personally, I don't know what the square root of 2 is off the top of my head all the time. I don't know what the square root of 3 is off the top of my head all the time. I don't know what the square root of 7 is off the top of my head. So why not find a number that I can plug in right. and know what its perfect square is? All right, let's say, example. Just by looking at it, I don't know what it is. Like, is that going to be a problem? We're going to figure out. The shape? What do you mean you don't know what it is? Like, no. So, well, earlier we said it's a negative linear and it's a, I don't know what, and a square root function. So, if I don't know the shape, that is okay. Me knowing the shape just helps me validate what I'm pl what I'm doing. Because I know the shape, I know what direction I'm, I'm curving things. I know what direction I'm heading. And if you don't know the shape, that's when you would just plug in the values to figure out and then connect those dots. Okay. Alright, so my domain would be all real numbers. What about my range though? And I have a value at zero, right? Yeah. Okay. 